Sometimes you just got to sit and do it. And if you don't do it, you can't learn from the experiences, right? So I will admit here that, again, this is being done from the perspective of a home hobbyist. Um, this particular home hobbyist doesn't have the budget for a full-out professional restoration by a bunch of car restoration gurus. And admittingly, while this vehicle does have a lot of value with it, right, um, the idea here is to get as much done as you can yourself because that's how Pop did it, right? And the idea of Project Fast Fish is to blend the world of what Pop had and, you know, the world that we have here today. And that basically means that, hey, we have access to information that he didn't back in the day, right? And we can look up resources, so on and so forth. And in keeping with Pop though, you know, a lot of it is just use what you have and do what you can, okay? So this right here is the result of several attempts to make this panel. And while it's not perfect, I think it will work. And there are a couple of flaws here, um, and I'll point those out here in a few minutes and uh, be a little bit more critical with myself and then uh, what have you. But again, the idea was not to completely replace this whole outer rocker, which includes the sill panel here. The idea was to remake this complete portion here, okay, from here to there, and uh, to save us from having to completely get rid of the uh, whole rocker and replace that, right? So uh, you saw in the previous episodes that, hey, we had to cut out to see or to discern where we had rust at and what was needed to be replaced. And then, of course, we determined that, hey, there was a whole lot that needed to be replaced on this particular panel here itself, right? So what I did was um, essentially this was made out of three pieces. It would have been easier to do it into two pieces, but with the equipment that I had, I was kind of limited, right? So my initial vision was to create this back piece right here from here back, right? Because the dimensions from here to here remain the same and a slight variance in dimensions down here, right? And this turned out really, really good. I was really happy with that, right? Um, it gave my uh, little Harbor Freight uh, brake press a little bit of a uh, fit, but it did work. Now, when I attempted to make this longer piece here, all right, from here to here, okay, that press was not having it, okay? It was not, it was just saying, no, I don't want to do it anymore. This is too difficult. And that's fine. That's the limitations of having a $90 press from Harbor Freight, okay? 16 gauge steel isn't going to work. Why 16 gauge, not 18 gauge? Well, it's what I had, all right? So with that in mind, okay, even if I had 18 gauge, I think it still would have struggled to get this 11 inches that was needed right here, or approximately 11 inches. Now, with that in mind, okay, um, what I ended up having to do was after several failed attempts at it, because things weren't lining up just right or what have you, I decided to make this into three pieces because I had a piece that turned out really, really good up here. All right, it fell a little short on this, okay? Um, but, you know, hey, it's all right. I can work that in and that's no worries there, okay? But, um, and you could see kind of the seam right here where I welded this second piece in. Now, ideally, it would have been better for it to come down here all the way in one smooth arc. And you're absolutely right, it would have been better. But again, I didn't have the equipment to do that, so we made this happen, okay? And I didn't want to use the 72 and cut that off the 72 because, well, I got different plans for the 72. Now, the other thing is on the other side here, right? This is what I actually wanted to make sure was straight as possible so it could line in with the inner rocker as easy as possible. And then, of course, I could use the uh, pieces right here to kind of weld back in, so on and so forth. My light just went out on me, so I apologize for the lighting here. But um, what you can see is I went ahead and I've changed the direction of where I was going for this particular panel. And what happened was, as I was uh, getting the uh, initial panel that I had fabricated for this in there, uh, I was going to do a butt weld. And as I, as I was tacking it in, I was like, man, this is not going to work. I'm not going to get the clearance. And it's clearly going to look better with the flange. So what I did is I went ahead and cut everything out from about here down, okay, so from here down, and then removed it, 
and then fabricated this piece to include the little flange. Now this little flange isn't as um, aggressive as the uh, other one that came from the factory. I just used my little Harbor Freight uh, flange and hole punch dealie, and uh, that gave me that little flange there, okay? And this will give me a good backing for the plate that goes in there. And as you can see here, what I did is I went ahead and where that goes, I went ahead and gave a couple of spots, right, where I can do some plug welds for that area, okay? And I wanted to give enough plug welds where it can reinforce whatever is going on structurally here, okay? So let me go ahead and get this in and I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll finish up some other um, little patches and we will be golden. This is where things stand, well, at this midway point. And I'm gonna explain that green line here in a few moments. Now, it's not perfect, but I think for the home hobbyist, we're doing all right. Don't laugh at my welds there. Those are hideous, but they're doing their job and we're not gonna see them, right? So there we go. Now, what in the world did I do here? Well, you saw the, uh, the basic uh, outline of the piece, which is from right here all the way to the edge over here uh, in with the clamps, okay? And so now we've had a chance to go ahead and weld. The seam started right here and then worked its way down. Now there was a lot of fill that needed to be done back here. And I knew that was gonna happen because one, you know, getting these panels to match up exactly was very difficult for the tools that I had. And two, this metal down here was pretty thin and it required a, a couple of um, lines being made with the uh, MIG welder. Now, could this have been done cleaner? Sure, maybe with TIGs or what have you, but I think we're in a good spot. And uh, this basic green line here is for, well, the following purpose. This piece right here fits in to this area. All right, I'm leaving the existing plug welds. I'm gonna clean those plug holes up so I can plug weld it, right? But basically that's where it sits. So those ugly areas down there can easily be lightly filled in with a little bit of body filler. I'm okay with a little bit of body filler here, all right? A little bit of patchwork, a little bit of body filler, I think is gonna happen for the home hobbyist. We're not professional body men and uh, what have you. Unless you're professional body men, then you can tell me how to do this with uh, maybe a TIG or something, but uh, I think we're in a good spot. Now that green line is the other piece of metal that goes from here to here, okay? And uh, that piece of metal is actually right here. So you can see here where it's gonna work in and so all I have to do is fill this in with a little bit of body filter, and then I can get that panel attached here. Really nice, and then I'll be able to finish this section right here. Now on the other side, this turned out really well. Um, I'm, kind of, I'm happy with it. It wasn't perfect. I was a little shy on my, um, uh, my flange there, so I mis um, read that just a little bit. But overall, we got some good uh, welds done in here, and I'm happy with that. All righty. So, again, that's where things currently stand. Now, I'm going to show you how things turned out after all is said and done, and I get it buttoned up here, okay? And we're going to compare one side to the other side to see how well I did, right? And, um, yeah, that should pretty much uh, show you that it doesn't take professional jobs. Again, I'm just a home hobbyist. You can get out there and do this, too. It may not be perfect, but it's better than, well, some of the other stuff I've seen out there, and I've seen some crazy, crazy things. So thank you for watching, and we'll catch you on the next episode.